For the last couple of weeks, we have been looking at the apostle known as Philip. First, we looked at the Gospel of Philip, and then last week, we looked at the Acts of Philip. Well, Philip, his Gospel and his Acts were apparently written by a man named Valentinus, or Valentinus's students. This week, we're going to look at another heretical gospel that was also written by Valentinus or perhaps one of Valentinus's students. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Again, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. If you would like to help support the channel, there is a link to our Patreon page down below in the description box. Also, thank you again to Tiffany Monroe, our producer here at Esoteric Atlanta. Tiffany is a master Reiki healer. Her and her husband do run a nonprofit based out of Atlanta that has to do with Reiki training and spiritual development. If you would like to get in touch with Tiffany, her email address is listed down below. Even if you don't live in Atlanta or live in the state of Georgia, she can work with you from afar. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're going to be talking about the Gospel of Truth. concept of truth can be tricky at times. We know that reality is perception and perception is reality. What we perceive and what we feel establish our truth. But there is one definite truth. The truth that goes beyond the illusion. The illusionary world is the world of matter. It's our nature. You see, in yoga, we call that prakriti. Prakriti is anything that has a birth, a life, and a death. It's reciprocal. It runs in a cycle, beginning, middle, and end. Now, the interesting thing about the Gnostic texts, the ones that were deemed heretical from the Bible, they, they speak very similar as the way the old yoga sutras teach or the Upanishads. In fact, the more I study the banned books of the Bible and the early Christian faith, the more I see how identical it is to Eastern philosophy. Now, of course, with the Christian faiths, there is an emphasis on the fact that Jesus died for our sins to make us whole again and to remind us that we are also children of a living God. However, one of the biggest problems, in my opinion, with the modern day church is that we focus more on the death of Jesus than the life of Jesus. In fact, when we look at the missing books from the Bible, we see that Christianity, a lot like the practice of yoga and other spiritual practices, is a practice. It's not a dogma. It's a daily, daily, daily devotional to correcting yourself and watching your own attachments. The world of Prakriti or nature, the illusionary world, is that because it is the matrix. It's not actually real. Now this is very, very deep philosophy and sometimes when you are first introduced to this version of Eastern thought, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And the reason why it's overwhelming is because many people get triggered by it. And they're triggered by it because they are attached to the material world. And being attached to the material world not only is a trick of illusion, but it's also what causes our human suffering. Because you see, the thing about nature is that it's always changing. So our expectation for these attachments rarely becomes the reality. So what is real? Well, what is real is your spirit, your soul, your Atman, your Brahman, the part of you that is eternal being. That part of you has nothing to do with the identity of who you are in your body. Your body in this life is just a vehicle. The real essence of who you are is what you don't see in the mirror. It has nothing to do with your gender, your race, your being in this, this earth. It has everything to do with that spirit. Now, a lot of Christians will fire back and say, well, how is this so when in the book of Genesis, it said that God made man in God's image? 
Well, as Carrie Cassidy has said, God has many faces. When you look at how God made man in his image, we're talking about that flash of consciousness, that spirit, that eternal being. We see throughout the Gnostic Gospels, the, some of the original Gospels that were written by the disciples of Jesus Christ, that Gnosticism, our Gnosis knowing, came from knowing your true self. Your true self has absolutely nothing to do with your physical self. Your true self doesn't have a favorite color. Your true self doesn't have a favorite food. Your true self doesn't hate, isn't jealous and isn't fearful. Your true self is that silence within you, the part of you that will go on and on and on. But when Lucifer fell from grace, apparently, according to the Gnostic Gospels, part of Lucifer's trick was to create pride in man and make man attached to the illusionary world that is not permanent. Part of what Jesus did when Jesus came down to earth was to remind people like we saw in the gospel of thomas that we are children of an almighty living god we do not belong to the earth that is why thomas was the twin or didymos he, it was the twin that jesus was saying you too are a child of god as well and i'm here to remind you of that well, the gospel of truth is like all encompassing of all the gnostic gospels we looked at so far the the gospel of truth really just kind of sums it all up and in fact in my opinion the gospel of truth is one of the most beautifully written gnostic gospels out there it was also found in the nag hammadi library in 1945. now as i said in the opening we believe that the our scholars believe rather that the gospel of truth was written by valentinus somewhere between 100 and 160 AD. So again, the Gospel of Truth was written very close to the time of Jesus. Valentinus was a student of a disciple. It could have also been Valentinus's student, but nonetheless, it was very close to the original source, which was Jesus. The very interesting thing about Valentinus, in my opinion, is that he was at one point highly respected as an early church father. Now again, he lived long before Constantine was ever born, and so this was during the days where the Christian faith was very new and was not standardized or created as a state religion like it would have eventually become. It is said that at one point Valentinus was up for a bishop position in the early church and as well as the Pope. That's how much people really respected Valentinus. However, now people view Valentinus as being completely heretical because Valentinus really focused on this idea of gnosis or knowing God through the practice of not being attached to the illusionary world of the matrix. In fact, every written piece from an early church father that refers back to this Gnosticism is now deemed heretical, and I think I have a very good idea why. If you've been following along on the Dark Outpost and some of our catch-up videos here on Esoteric Atlanta, you know we've talked a lot about the Canaanites about how the Canaanites in the Bible have always been like the, it's always been a battle between the Canaanites and the Israelites, right? The Canaanites had multiple gods. They worshiped Moloch and Baal. They, they committed human and sacrifice basically with babies most of the time. And the Israelites were the people who believed in one almighty God. We know now as the veil has been lifted that we are still experiencing in our world this battle between the Canaanites and the Israelites. Yes, we do have a large group of people who run our world that still participate in a lot of these Canaanite activities, AKA Epstein Island. If you understand history, you know that the Canaanites became the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were, they were in merchants, they were in boats. They uh, are connected to the color purple. The Phoenicians, the Phoenician families now are allegedly the 13 families that rule our world, including the royal family, which again is one of my lineages. And I do have some videos on that bloodline. I think I've privated them though because of YouTube's crazy censorship policy. So if you want those videos, just message me and I'll send them to you. But anyway, when Constantine came into power, we know that Constantine was not he was, not, he was not a Christian, right? And I'll 
link that video down below as well. He utilized this new Christian faith in order to help him conquer the Roman Empire. Constantine practiced a religion called Mithraism. Mithraism was another level or an element or an offshoot of these Canaanite faiths. We know that the Vatican means the head of the serpent, and we do know that the popes, especially the one we have now, have been anything but Christian. In fact, there is a room underneath the Vatican that's the Lucifer room. You can find this online. There are pictures of it. It's not hidden. And if you listen to a lot of whistleblowers, especially Swally, who was whistleblowing back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they talk about human sacrifices happening in the Lucifer room at the Vatican. There's also been bones and left body parts found around the Vatican in times past. I think we understand that. We know that the corruption runs deep. In my opinion, the corruption started running deep around the time of Constantine. When they were putting the Bible together, when they were taking all these gospels and trying to create a cohesive canonized Bible, they took out a lot of stuff. For example, we believe that there are probably 177 books that have been omitted from the Bible. We only have about 45 of those books now. So if you think about how few books are actually in the canonized Bible versus what there should have been, we're not getting the whole picture. It's interesting when you look at the canonized Bible, they picked the Bible gospels that helped them establish a state religion that therefore they could use and manipulate to control people. If they had left in these gospels of Gnostic faith of gnosis, then they would not be able to control people. That's what Jesus was teaching. Jesus was teaching that you don't need anything. You are connected to God. You alone have to do the work. You alone are God's child. There's no human being that can do the work for you. This was Jesus's message through his life. And then his salvation through his death came as a sacrifice to try to win the world back from Lucifer. But what happens when the people who worship Lucifer take control of the newly founded Christian church? Well, I, in my opinion, this is exactly what happened. You see, when Constantine was alive in the 300s, going up into the 400s, we look at like places like Alexandria, which again, we've done videos on, I'll link those below with Hypatia. We were coming into an age of enlightenment. People were learning geometry. We were figuring things out. Again, we had Alexandria, we had Athens, we had all this expansive knowledge coming out into the world. And then all of a sudden, what happened? The Dark Ages. Now they say that the Library of Alexandria has completely disappeared. However, I have heard rumors that the Catholic Church, the Vatican, has all of the information from the Library of Alexandria in its vault. They've got everything in their vault. So it's my opinion that the satanic Canaanites that took over the Roman Empire that made Christianity a form of Mithraism through a state religion were in complete control of the Dark Ages by pushing humanity down into a level of complete, utter survival where people were not being educated anymore. And therefore, in their vulnerable lives, they were having to cling to the Catholic Church. At this point, the Pope started charging people for interest into heaven. Like you had to buy your real estate into heaven. Of course, the Bible doesn't say this at all. In fact, if you look at the Gnostic Gospels, it's the exact opposite of that. But the church was able to use that to control people. This was a version of mind control, the same mind control that the media uses to this day. Now, obviously, as time went forward, we did go out of the Dark Ages. We had the Crusades, and then we also had the Protestant Reformation when more and more people started to learn how to read and write. They were able to like look at the Bible and be like, um, this is not what the Bible says, right? They still didn't have these missing gospels. These missing gospels weren't found until later, but at least people were starting to acknowledge that maybe there had been a lot of corruption and manipulation from the Roman Catholic Church. Now, don't get me wrong, the Protestant churches are also corrupt.
in my opinion, the Protestant churches start off, started off on the right foot. They were trying to reestablish what it truly meant to know God without having to go through another human being. But by this point, by 2021, of course, that's not the same anymore. Growing up in a Presbyterian church, I can definitely tell you there is spiritual abuse and spiritual manipulation across all denominations of the Christian faith. And that's because a lot of denominations of the Christian faith, not all of them, I'm just generally speaking, teach through fear. Fear of going to hell, fear of not being good enough for God. But when you look at the Gnostic Gospels, you see this is not necessary because fear is coming from a place of attachment. Now, I personally am appalled when people teach the Christian faith through fear and I will immediately dismiss somebody if they go that route because to me, that's abusive. It's like when you're in an abusive relationship and your partner is beating you up or being mean to you and telling you that you can't get anybody better than that person and they continue to abuse you to make you stay. That's exactly the same thing as saying, well, if you don't follow me, if you don't join this church, if you don't believe exactly what I believe, you're going to go to hell. That's abuse. And Jesus was not abusive. The Gnostic Gospels teach us that Jesus came to liberate us so that we wouldn't be attached to another human being's perception. We wouldn't even be attached to our own perceptions, that we would understand our true connection with God was inside of us. Behold, the kingdom of heaven or hell is inside of you, not outside of you, inside of you. As I say on David's channel, as we start to dig through all of these banned and missing and heretical books from the Bible, I let God show me which book to go to next. I never make a plan when I'm researching one book. I just allow God to show me where to go to next. And so far, we've been hanging out in the what would be Gospels from the New Testament. I believe that because right now we are going through a huge transformation in our world. We are definitely living in the apocalypse. Apocalypse means to lift the veil. We're starting to see the truth through the illusion. We're starting to see these Canaanites for exactly who they are. Now, of course, when you start to take the red pill, as they say, and wake up and understand what's really going on in our world, it can cause a lot of emotion. You can get triggered a lot because you are seeing where you are attached to certain ideas that maybe aren't so correct anymore. I believe that in my personal opinion, God is keeping us in these Gnostic Gospels to help calm us down and ground us during this time of transformation. Because at the end of the day, you are an eternal being. At the end of the day, everything happening on the exterior of you has nothing to do with what's happening inside with your spirit. Now, the last couple of weeks, I have read parts of the Gospels on the video, but I'm not going to do that today. The Gospel of Truth is truly beautifully written, and I would suggest everybody read it for themselves. I don't want to take anything away from your experience and your relationship with these beautiful works. However, before sitting down to read the Gospel of Truth, I would really suggest that you review everything that the Gnosis is teaching you. If you don't understand Gnosticism or if you don't understand the teachings of Gnosticism, the, the text might be a little bit confusing. However, once you can wrap your head around what, what, what it's actually saying about illusion versus truth, it is, it is extremely beautiful and very, very touching. And if anybody has any questions regarding this philosophy, feel free to email me and I'll be more than happy to help you with it. I, as you all know, I spend a lot of my life in India studying the Eastern philosophy anyway. And so I, I feel like this is, I'm pretty well equipped in this philosophy, understanding what they're, what they're saying. So if that's something that's new to you and, and you are confused, I will be more than happy to walk you through it. Now, next week for our Dark Outpost episode and then our catch up here on our channel, we're gonna be going over the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. This was a um, heretical gospel that was actually recommended from Mike from Texas. He says it's his favorite. And so we're gonna go on into that gospel next week. Again, I want to apologize for any interruptions in our regular schedule right now, or if you can hear any type of like helicopter activity going on outside. Again, uh, Esoteric Atlanta is not just the title of our channel. I actually do live 
right in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia, and our Capitol building is about a mile and a half away from where I live. We do know that we have a lot of corrupt officials down here in the Peach State in Georgia, and I would not be surprised if for the next couple of weeks we do continue to have some interruptions and here's some military grade helicopters swirling around outside. The United States, as well as other parts of the world, are experiencing some blackouts right now. I believe this is all very intentional. Most of you who watch this channel are aware that we are in the middle of World War III right now. It just looks very different from World War I and World War II. Um, again, that has caused some internet issues here in America, and I know from all of you guys in other countries as well, it's caused some issues and some power outages. And so once again, I do apologize if in the next you know, six weeks we we get a little off schedule or something it's it's not my plan to be off schedule it just has everything to do with what's going on in the world and stuff that I have no control over if you are like me and you are living in a major city I wish I be safe um, again this is global this is not just about America but it's it's about it's the Canaanites versus the Israelites, and the Canaanites now come in the form of the New World Order, and that's what we're fighting against. Um, for the Americans out there that are having a hard time this week, in my opinion, we are under the Insurrection Act. There's there's no president right now, even though it looks like there is. There's, there's not one, from what I understand. It's all optics. Um, thank you to everybody who reached out to me and told me that they had aired the inauguration early in the morning on Wednesday, which means that it was pre-recorded because when you guys saw the inauguration over in Europe, it was still the nighttime, like dark here. And I'm on the same time zone as Washington DC where I'm literally like a 45 minute flight from Washington DC. So, so um, yeah, that means that the inauguration we saw on Wednesday didn't happen on Wednesday, but was pre-recorded. And yes, I am filming this right now early, early, early on Thursday morning, the 21st. Um, I told you guys in our community tab that we didn't air this on Wednesday because of the inauguration. Um, and I'm going to be hopefully putting this video out for you guys today on Thursday. But if anything were to change before you actually see this video, this is because I'm filming this very early in the morning on Thursday. Like it's super in the early in the morning right now. It's like the only time we can actually get some quiet to try to film. But anyway, I know that the best is yet to come. As we've been told, the corporation of the United States of America is now dissolved. The act of 1871 is finished. And now we are in the process of getting our Republic back. So yay. We're gonna be now a country run by the people for the people as our forefathers intended our country to be run. We were never supposed to be under the act of 1871. In fact, right now we are transitioning into a place of being sovereign citizens again, not just citizens, but sovereign citizens. And I do personally believe that this sovereignty will be going out all over the world very soon because we are in the age of Aquarius, which is the a thousand years of peace. We are going into the Nasara, which I don't know if they'll call it Nasara, but it's basically means that our money globally will now be gold back and not adrenochrome backed. This is what, uh, John F. Kennedy tried to do with his executive order 1110. He was trying to get rid of the Federal Reserve, which was part of the Act of 1871. The Federal Reserve is not just for America, it's for the whole world, for the whole central banking. And that's what got him assassinated. So we are now at the final hours of kicking these satanic and demonic people off of our out of our country and hopefully off the planet so um yay it's just gonna be a little dark before the dawn so just hold on tight please be careful if your town goes under martial law or you have military presence just listen to the national guards or the military they are on our side here in the united states the military is here to protect we the people not they the government right and our constitution so just let them do what they've been trained to do and you stay at home and we're going to be going into an amazing golden age very very soon and thank you so much to all of our servicemen and women out there i cannot thank you enough for all the sacrifices that you've been willing to make to help us usher us into this beautiful new awakening
All right, guys, thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase our music, there's a link down in the description box below. And thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys because I'm a dumbass when it comes to computers and technology. So I literally could not do this channel without his help. Okay, hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Again, if there's any inter internet interruptions or videos are late, just understand that right now we're in a very weird war and so it probably has a lot to do with stuff that's out of our control, but we are gonna keep trying to bring these videos to you at least three a week as we normally do. All right, you guys, be safe and have a wonderful day. Bye.